Hello and welcome to Play Matters. Some technical difficulties there. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> that was like three separate screen changes. And I know, because I've got it all lined up on my little stream deck here, that I should go live to purple, then green, yellow, orange and red. And I know it sounds like a bizarre um, system, but it works in my head. And I pressed green, then yellow, then purple. So anyway, just my own systems don't work. And I am slightly late tonight because uh, Twitch, uh, Twitch just wouldn't log in for me. Um, I don't know why. And actually, also Steam wouldn't log in for me, um, which I think I now need to log back into. So give me a moment while I log into Steam. Uh, yeah, I don't know why. Actually, I've noticed I've been having some Steam login issues since um, I got the Steam Deck. And I think it's because you can only be logged in in one place at a time. And so as long as the Steam Deck is kicking around logged in, I think it throws you out or locks you out of your other. Anyway. So uh, I'm live. And for another Play Matters, and we're here to explore play, uh, digital play, video games generally, but also where we can look at the game-based learning uh, implications of um, digital places and spaces. So I'm really excited uh, this week. Actually, I've, I, last week I said to you, I'll work out what I want to do next week and I'll let you know. And I didn't, um, because up until just a few minutes ago, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. But then I just, I've been watching Pirates of the Caribbean. And I thought it would be fun to show you the uh, Obra Dinn, which is a wonderful, wonderful game that I am going to load in right now. Let me just do that. It's actually a murder mystery set on an old, uh, an old ship. So we, the return of the Obra Dinn, we are going to play it and see uh, what's what. Um, yeah, okay, so that's working. So let me see now if we can get it working on uh, stream. So if you're with us, give us a little hi in the chat and let us know so we can see um, who's in with us. Otherwise, and actually I'm gonna log in over here, because uh, I am not logged in on my, I've got, I've got, I said it live over here so I can see the chat and so on, and I'm not actually logged in over there. So, hmm, let's see if that works. I can see Craze is with us, Kay's, I am in trouble. I'm in big trouble in Conan. I need your help, buddy. I need your help. I went a wandering and I lost many things. I can see Manon's with us as well. Hey, Manon. Um, let me just, I don't seem to be able to get into. I don't seem to be able to get into um, Twitch over here. Unbelievable. Oh, uh, yeah, I was on Conan today, Kays, and man, I, and I had all this amazing equipment. I've been making all sorts of amazing equipment, and then I fell down a cliff, and my body glitched into the cliff, and it wasn't there when I went back. It was gone. My little grave showed, but my body wasn't, and so I couldn't get any of it back, so that was a start again. Um, anyway, let me just see what I can do with... Uh, What's going on here? Um, yes, yeah, Sarah, Minecraft Live was interesting, wasn't it? There was a few things on there that interested me. Most of it don't doesn't really apply to what I do. Um, and that's been the same across a lot of the Minecraft kind of stuff. I mean, it comes and, and we can work with it later. I mean, Camel's absolutely fantastic. Love the new signs. Dungeons, I've played a couple of times and I'm, I just, I just can't get into it. But then, but then I don't play survival, so I just don't do survival Minecraft. I'd rather play other types of games like Conan, for example, or Ark Survival Evolved, or 
there's so many different survival games that I'd rather play than Minecraft. And so I do struggle with that sometimes, making that transition between one and the other. Um, let me see what I can... Let me see if I can log into Twitch. No, nope, it is not letting me log in. And I just... changed my password like two weeks ago so I've no idea what's going on with this I'm gonna to have to do that whole check-in thing but anyway it doesn't really matter there we go that'll do I'll just watch it without and I can see that we have nine people in with us so I'm sorry that I didn't normally I send out a little communications um, uh, an hour before but I haven't been able to do that today which is which is not on and I need to work on that and then the other thing is I then finally sat down and was like hey we're gonna do this tonight I'm gonna get organized and the tech wouldn't work but then the tech never works I'm quite sure the tech gods are poking fun at me on a daily basis um, so let's do uh, let's do this. So I'm going to move over to Let's do that case. Let's absolutely do that. Right now I need to just make sure that my game capture It says it's looking for a game folks. This is what I hate because it's like hey looking for a game um, But it's not is it? So I have to do that and then go auto and it probably still won't work. So yeah, it doesn't work. Look at this, it's meant to be automatic. Thanks very much, Streamlabs. Um, but I'm gonna go for, uh, pick a specific window and we're gonna go for Obra Dinn. Let's see if that works. Yes, that works, except as usual. In fact, surely then if I do automatic, and then, there we go. Right, so it turns out, I think I've just realized, it turns out all I have to do is it says auto, but it doesn't detect until you enter the game. Um, so that's fair. Okay, I'm also gonna make sure that the sound is working. So let me just, um, you're not hearing sound, are you? Are you hearing music when I do this? I was just saying that, Barry. Um, I want to make sure that you're not... I'm going to have to turn the music down, actually. You are hearing sound. Brilliant. Because the sound is really, really good on this. Except I want to make sure, before we go any further... I just want to make sure that the... Company man woke me up. Said you'd need ferry to the old bread inn. Not many eager for that job. Seems a bit late if you ask. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. What's in the box? Female protagonist. I don't know. Hoist it up in a few minutes. Hey! How? Carefully. Now, what's really amazing about this game is that it was made not so long ago, and yet it's done in an almost Commodore 64 style. It's almost vector. But it's not, because what we're actually looking at are really quite detailed scenes. And we're, we're playing with, I mean, look at the, the, the banners of the ship moving and the motion of the ship. And the, de excuse me, the details there, it's just, and we can move around in it. It's just whether or not we can do anything with this, uh, this box, which we can't. So I'm just going to go straight up. So we're in this almost like vector um, space, but we're playing with light. Every and that's what I love about this. I, I studied chiaroscuro as part of my art degree, um, and so the use of light and the play of light in artwork is particularly interesting for me. So when I first saw this game, I was like, "Oh my goodness, this is beautiful." Um, now, what you can do is you can go into. First of all, I'm going to go into audio volume, and I'm going to take it down to. 
just above metal maybe yeah just above metal let's see does that make it a bit better let's try that one more time let's go to audio volume just below metal that feels a bit better uh let me know if you've lost the sound at all um for that you should still hear the waves and the creaking of the ship and stuff like that. It's very, very loud for me otherwise. Um, oh, look. And you'll see that the um, the sky is kind of like, look at that and the ripples on the water. It's just beautiful. It's just a completely different way of looking at artwork for games. But everything moves. Everything is unique in its own place, place and space. I imagine this was uh, possibly built for the purpose like it was probably built as a, a fully graphically realized ship and then it was broken down into that art style the other thing you can do is if you go to the monitor you can change it to an ibm 55151 a zenith um zfm tw uh, 1240 a commodore so we can do the commodore and if we press play it plays like it's on a commodore 64 which i think is lovely uh, an IBM 8503, which is quite nice. And then LCD. Ooh. Purely black and white. Something flashing in the water over there. Uh, and then back to Macintosh. I actually like the Macintosh. It kind of fits with that old pirate kind of theme for me. So, um, we can view the controls. We can look sensitivity nearly motionless. I think we'll leave it at nearly motionless. And then... Uh, we're going to go, I think that's it actually. So let me know, the sound check, you can still hear um, me and the game. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start to have a look around at what this game could possibly mean. So as we approach over here, we can go upstairs and we can have a little look around. We've got the whole of the deck to kind of look around at. But as we head downstairs, also give me any notes on whether or not the stream itself is not performant there's a dead body and it's an old dead body it's 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 old um and the story is that the ship has come into port and the people on it are dead and we have to figure out what's going on oh there we go it's too heavy unbelievable where did all the gentlemen go Right, let's go down and get it ourselves, shall we? You can hear the game, but very quiet. Evening, Pickard. Right, let me see if I can just turn the music up again then. So audio volume, comfortably loud. How's that? It's too heavy. Take it yourself or open it here. Right, we'll open it here then. And when we open it, we can see that there is a journal... Um, and we can open it up. Now, a catalogue of adventure and tragedy, 1807. So let's go for a page turn. Okay. I trust that you now found yourself aboard the Obra Dinn. I expected this day to come and my very intention was to tell the ship's strange tale within the pages of this book. Almost looks like a Minecraft, um, a Minecraft book. Regrettably, failing health has allowed me to produce only the basic outline that follows. Your presence on the Obra Dinn is critical, Stephen. Uh, I leave the discovery of its fate and the completion of this book in your hands. The next few pages will seem bewildering at first. All will make sense in time. Use the pocket watch to determine the identity and fate of everyone aboard. Complete each chapter accurately and return the book by guaranteed post to the French Office of Affairs in Morocco. The bargain chapter will remain unknown to you. I possess the details within but have elected to keep them private for now. Henry Evans. Now, we then go to the contents and you can skip directly to them. So let's go look at the crew. So we can see, if we click on this, we actually get a roster. So we now need to find the fate of Robert Witterell and William Hoskett and Edward Nichols and John Davies and so on and so on. And we need to figure out what happened to every single one of the crew because they're all dead. And then we have pictures of the crew. And so now what we can do is we can match those names to faces. So we basically become this almost like private detective or um, 
a member of the Pinkertons or whatever it was back then, and we can start to identify who these people were. And nobody at the moment is identified. And then what else is happening in the book? We can go to the next chapter, which is Loose Cargo. And all of these chapters, The Bitter Cold, Murder, we have to fill those chapters out and decide what it is that happened on the ship. And we do that by observing and filling out details and critically evaluating the scenes that are in front of us. And our watch, which you're about to discover, allows us to go back in time. Uh, we've also got the ship itself, so we can click on where its, uh, its journey went. So we went from, um, we went probably Portsmouth, nor is Portsmouth not further along. We certainly went from Cornwall in England, by the looks of things, to Madeira, past the Canary Islands, around Cape Verde, and then, or Cape Verde, and then we went down to the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa. And at some point, everyone died. <laughs> so ill-fated is our journey. And then we can also go and have a look at, so now on this, we start to establish where people were and where they were murdered and so on and so on. Somebody did it. So there we go. What else did we miss in the book? The glossary, the life at sea, uh, soldiers of the sea. The, these are all the chapters and the back cover. What's on the back cover? Ooh. Open or close the book or go to the table of contents. So we can queue, etc. So that's how we make our way through the book. Falmouth, Falmouth, excellent, all right. And then we have this watch and what this watch allows us to do is go back in time. Memento mortem. Remember death. I was learning, funny actually, I heard memento mortem two or three days ago on a TikTok. A Scottish guy called Highlander Andy, who was in, he was a body double for Jamie in Outlander and he does a lot of Scottish tours and things. And he was saying that on Scottish graves, um, it was common if you were a pauper and you died in a poor grave and they didn't really know what your profession was or even your name sometimes, they would just put memento um, mortem, uh, memento mortem, remember death. <clears throat> right, so now that we have our watch, what we can do is we can now go start to explore. Now, we can try doors, and we can go into rooms, and we can, there's nothing in here to see. Certainly not at this point. Uh, can we get into this door? Come on, shut that door. No, we can't, that door's locked. And I think the other one is locked as well. Yep, we're not allowed into the, the, the quarters yet, and we are allowed in here. Ooh. But again, nothing, oh, uh, yeah, there's something flashing in the water over there. Who knows, but we'll get to that. Sometimes I get lost and I have to organize myself a little bit. But, um, okay, let's go see this body. So now, when you'll notice when we look at the body, we are able to remember its death. So we click on the watch. A Scot. Ah, lest we break it down and take more than those shells. You bastard, please take exactly what I give you. So now we are faced with a still shot in, and this is what I really, really love about this. Uh, this game is that we're now faced with a still shot in time of the death. And so we have to assume that the man we found was him. And we can go around this death, ooh, that's a bit gory, and we can figure out what happened. So whoever he is, 
short hem. And we can't get past him, although we can see that tables are overturned. And we know it was with a pistol. And we only get a short time to look at it. Oh, so now, enter the book. I don't know why it did that. Let's go back to the beginning. Oh. It's doing this for us. So outside, part one, outside the captain's quarters. Who is this and how did they die? Uh, so we can go in and we can have a look and it says, uh, and we get the dialogue. Captain opened the door. The other guy, I'm assuming behind him, says kick it in, lest we break it down, says the Scot, and take more than those shells. You terrible people may take exactly what I give you. Bang. Okay, so we can see what happened there. Who is this guy? Now, we, I can identify, it's told us roughly who that is. This is an unknown soul, met an unknown fate, and we can see him. So I'm going to go back to the um, others that were present. So it now tells us that this guy was present and he's wearing white. So I think he was the guy behind. I'm assuming one of these, that's the captain. And that I think must be the first mate because he's standing next to the captain and is dressed appropriately. I'm just making assertions here, by the way. So what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna go to, and the location was Top deck, captain's quarters right outside. So the fact that the captain was in the captain's quarters, so it's all about deduction, of course. The captain was in the captain's quarters. They shouted on him as the captain. So I think what we can now do is go back and we can just get another look at this. So yeah, he's got a little Tammy hat on and he's wearing a white shirt. He's got a jacket and a cravat on and he's just been shot with a I can't decide if that's a beard I think it's a beard and then our captain looks like this Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, that's me taking the shot there we go all right so I think we're fine with that and, it, and it, what it does is it kind of isolates it and it lets you have a little look around to see if anything else was going on maybe there's another angle that you could look from not in there not over the edge. In other scenes that I've, I've, I've played with, I know that you can sometimes catch something and think, oh right, she was watching or he was there at the same time. We're not allowed through that door. So no, so I'm gonna just gonna go out and I'm gonna start my investigation. Right. And what that's done is, it's now led us to chapter two which is, or the second part, which is now the cabin door is open. And so what's lovely about that is almost like each part of the narrative creates the next part of the narrative. So uh, let's go to our book, which is there. And what I want to do is go all the way back. Then I'm going to go to the crew and I'm going to go and have a look. And okay, we know that the captain was Robert Witterell. But we don't know what happened to him yet. William Hoskett was from Scotland. So we can see there that he was the first mate from Scotland. And I believe that he is him. And it says you don't have sufficient information to determine this person's identity. I thought I did. I thought I did. Okay, I was sure it was him await further clues. All right. So I can't add his fate yet, even though I know he was shot and I think it was him. There must be something else that we can do. Oh, they're hanging someone there. Look, justice at sea. Who were they hanging? Okay. William Hoscott, Robert Witterell, and the second mate was Edward Nichols. There's a lot of people in there. Okay. So, uh, that's our two ways of being able to identify who they were. I wonder also if it's worth... 
I wonder if we can identify, do you think he was the third mate? And I think the third mate was in the other picture, isn't he? No, no, he is in this one. There. Oh, well, we can try anyways. So I think he's... No, 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 no. I got that wrong. Oh, no. That was because I thought I was on the right guy. Hang on. I'm going to say that he is him try anyways there we are and he didn't meet an unknown fate i think he was shot with a gun and we can click on that memory memories where this person appears can be navigated from here this soul appears in one memory can i bookmark those memories okay i've bookmarked it now, I could be wrong about William Hoscott, but it's going to tell me, I think. No. All right. I'm also going to say that... Oh, so we know he's Captain Robert Witterell. We just don't know how he was killed. All right. So let's go into the next room. There we go. Who's this guy? <laughs> Where are they? <coughs> Must be in here someplace. <laughs> They're at the bottom of the sea. Davy Jones's locker. <laughs> Oops. So this is our immediate short investigation. So he slashed him. Wow. Uh, anyone else lying around? Anybody else out here? Oh, somebody, look. Somebody's outside. With a, with a blade in his mouth. I wonder if I can get up here on time and see. Ah, I can't see him, but he's jumped over the back of the ship. Hi, unicorn. We are playing Return of the Obra Dinn. So good to see you. Okay. So inside the captain's quarters, we are now... Oh, so that is our... Ah, that's our same guy. So he had his throat cut. This person's face appears blurred throughout the book. That's okay, we'll fix that. This blurring indicates that you don't yet have sufficient information, of course. Met an unknown fate. However, we do know... Carry on and pay attention, Stephen. Can't tell you how many times a teacher said that to me. <laughs> Faces will become unblurred when the information necessary to identify them has been revealed. In the meantime, I'm going to say that this guy was... Uh, struck, suicide, shot, poisoned, electrocuted, eaten. Eaten? <laughs> okay, let's say he was... Uh, knifed. But we don't know who the attacker was. Hang on, was it the captain? I think it was the captain again. He was... But we don't know who he is. Where are they? They must be in here someplace. They're at the bottom of the sea. That's a lie. Yeah, it's the captain. So the captain... So let's, let's assume they were trying to break the door down. He's opened the door and shot the second mate. Whoever was with him, this guy, has then run in and continued the fight and the captain slashed him. Okay. <clears throat> Others were present. No, just... So, yeah, the captain. It had to be the captain, Robert Witterell. But we do know that someone else is trying to come down the back so that they can get the captain later. All right. So now we get a good look at this. 
Yeah, so that's our guy with the Tammy hat and the, uh, the white shirt and the captain with his top off and his trousers on. Yeah, okay. The gun's been dropped on the floor. Now, remember in the first time we saw this scene, there was someone lying at this door, but there isn't now. And our first death is here. Ah, look, when you do that, it shows you who that is in the book. It shows you who he is. That's very clever. This is such a clever game, design-wise. And that's our captain with the captain's hat on. Okay. Okay, that's me. I'm quite happy. With, well, actually, am I happy with that investigation? I want to figure out what's going on with this guy. Oh, look, look, look. There's him. Oh, let's do that again. Oh, we only got... Ah, uh, yeah, there he is. So he's at the back with a woman. There's a woman down to his right. So we can identify her in the... And there's no, we can't go in that room. Anybody else? No, nothing. Right, okay. All right. I'm quite happy with that. So let's go get on with the investigation. Because this will now open up the next chapter as we go through. Aha, okay. So here we are back in the room. So we know that he died there. His shoes fallen off his feet and then here's a third guy is that the captain or is it on oh, the knife was dropped over there the pike that he was using is there there's a second knife we know what happened to him so let's go find out about our third guy dun dun Oh, <laughs> he took a bludgeon to the head with that pike. So the pike that he was going to use was picked up by the captain, but the captain's been stabbed. Look. Donk. Uh, and I'm assuming that is that guy, yeah. Hey, I'll tell you, the captain had a bit of oomph about him, didn't he? And this door is open. Ah, there's a woman. Yeah, she's the woman that's down from the guy that came in to try and kill the captain. Okay, so I can see it's starting to unfold. <laughs> All right. Inside the Captain Quarters, part three. Okay. Right. So who is this, and how do they how do they die? Well, we don't. We know he didn't. He was clubbed. I think is that what you would call it? Clubbed. Knifed. Spike. He wasn't spiked or speared. It was actually clubbed, but with a spike or a spear. So he was clubbed by. Robert Witterell. You don't have, that's okay, okay. We don't have sufficient clues. To, and, and, and they're right, we don't know who that is. Okay. Um, one other person was present. So we know it was him. Clubbed by R. Witterell. And we know where the location is. All right, so let's just go back. We'll get a little look at this now. So they're, they want something off the captain. Okay, we know that there's a woman. That's part four. That's going to be part four. So it's, it's consistently revealing part of the story. We're kind of <coughs> reverse engineering this story. All right. 
Uh, that was our guy there. We, where's the captain, though? Aha! So we've got a body on the floor. Oh, she never made it. Well, nobody did. <laughs> I know that much. <laughs> so let's find out who she is first. So, Martin, where is the captain? So she's, she's the captain's wife. Oh. She got crushed by, oh, oh, what on earth? Well, I never. This is exciting. Oh. That's our... Is that our guy from earlier? No, because he was dead. Our guy from earlier is dead. Wow, this is all happening. Look at this. Oh, that's our guy. So we've gone further back again, because we keep going back. Oh, he's covered in tattoos. He should be easy to identify if we could work out who he was. Now, he got ripped apart, so we can go in and fill in his death. We'll go back and have a look later. But in the meantime, he got ripped apart. That was... Tattoo guy <laughs> was ripped in two. The Doom. So we've skipped forward to... So you see how it's not linear? Even though we're reverse engineering, it's not linear. So that's actually really interesting. Okay, so who is this? So let's see if there's another Witteral. This unknown soul. I know, I know. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But she... There, are, there were 60 people on the ship when it left England. Determining everyone's identity will not be easy. All right, I was basically saying don't... Oh, so she got crushed by rigging, would you say? Beast, cannon, cargo, rigging. And I think, because we know they're dead... That's interesting, it's filled them in and we know they're dead. So that's good. So what about, uh, now she's, he's Witterall, so is there another Witterall? Abigail Hoskett Whistle, Witterall. But that could be a daughter, let's see if there's another Witterall. Abigail, so I think she's Abigail Hoskett Witterall. <laughs> This may or may not be correct. <laughs> Fates are validated in sets of three. Correctly identify at least three people and their fates to have information. Okay. Okay, so that's my guidance, but that's okay. So I think she is Abigail Hoskett Witterall. Let's see if there's anyone else might have fitted that. First of all, are there any other women? John, Alfred, Charles, Henry, James, Winston, uh, Zunga. There's an unknown steward, which we know is not... Her. Oh, there's Miss Jane Bird, but then it's a miss rather than a missus. Emile O'Farrell was the butcher. Emile, is that a woman's name? Emil? Emil? Maybe not. And Samuel Peters, George Shirley, Patrick O'Hagan... Good Irish name. He's not from Ireland, is he? Patrick O'Hagan. Get out of here. Um, assuming gender is visible, you're right. Um, oh, we had some Russians. No, I, I'm quite sure she is who we say she is. 
Oh no, I said she was Robert Witterell. I didn't mean that. She is. Sorry, folks, I'm making a bit of a pig's ear of this, but there we go. Abigail. Okay, so she wanted her husband. We know that she was... So, look, she says, Martin, where is the captain? So Martin's the first mate. Actually, let's go check that. I'm just going to use this to check it. Oh, Martin's the third mate. But then that's not to say that, I mean, she could have been talking to anyone. And 10 others were present. So this guy, we know he was the one that came down the back and tried to kill the captain later. Abigail, the wife. Then there's two other women. One of them's Miss Jane and one of them, actually, I'm not sure. And then all of these people. His face is clear like we're supposed to know who he is. See that? I don't I don't know if we're I don't know if we know who he is. Anyway, uh okay. I don't know why I'm shaking. Probably because this beast's coming. <laughs> oh yeah, there's all the other people. That's the other two women. Oh, I don't know what I did there. I pressed space. And it's done something. Oh, it's led me to... I don't know, the clock's doing something. I can't get up there. I don't know what it's doing. I think I have to go over to this guy. Yeah, I have. So I'm going to go back to his time. I don't know what's going on. Oh, I'm following the timer. There we go. Ooh, what's going on here? Oh, it's put his body in time. So there's his body there. Sorry, tattooed fella. And now we can go in and find out about him. Go unicorn! <laughs> That's great! Uh oh, that sounds gruesome. Oh, so he was picked up. Okay. Oh, there's our guy with the... Oh, he's got a spike, but it's not the same guy. He's... He's thrown him a gun. Now, did he throw the gun? Yeah, it looks like he threw it. He caught it. You'd throw a gun underarm, wouldn't you? Rather than... Oh, maybe you would. I don't know. There's a goat. Lanny, good to see you, my friend. We used to, when I was a kid, we used to live opposite a, a couple. John and, anyway, it doesn't matter. Anyway, John's the important part, simply because we would go over sometimes to visit. Sometimes, because John used to make us laugh. He's a funny man. And we'd go, my mum would say, come on, we'll go over and see John and Teresa or whatever. And we'd go over and we'd knock on the door. <laughs> and one afternoon we went in and... Uh, The, his wife, Teresa, said to us, oh, hang on, I'll just have to go and wake up John. I should have woken him up earlier anyway. He slept in for his afternoon nap. <laughs> and we thought it was a joke. I mean, I was a young kid and I remember standing on the doorstep thinking, slept in for his afternoon nap. And sure enough, she goes trundling through the living room. She says to him, John, 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 wake up, wake up, John. And he kind of comes out of his slumber. She says to him, come on now. She said, you've, you've overslept for your nap. Away up the stairs, come on. And she got him up, made a, 
he was like, oh, hi, everybody. He goes trundling up the stairs and goes to bed <laughs> for his afternoon nap. And then she invites us in and we have tea. And that stuck with me for like 40 years. <laughs> ah, who sleeps in for their afternoon nap? I would love that. Right, who is Tattooed Guy? And how did he die? Well, we know that he died by getting torn apart. I'm really sorry. By an unknown attacker? Well, it's not an unknown attacker. It's a beast. There it is. Look, unknown enemy or beast. Beast. A terrible beastie. A little beastie. Um, Robert Witterell is no longer um, confirmed dead, but Abigail is. I need to go and figure out how Robert Witterell... I need to go back and do the Robert Witterell thing. So I'm going to open the book, go back to the beginning, and we're going to go to the crew. <clears throat> We're going to go to Robert Witterell, who is this guy. And we know that his fate was the... Why is it not letting me put the fate in? Interesting. It won't let me put the fate of Robert Witterell in. He's in three memories. Show memories on deck map, depict injustice, and then book, uh, bookmark all the memories. Yeah, I want to bookmark all three of them. Uh, right, okay. Interesting that it's not going to let me say that he was stabbed. But then we don't know if that's how he died, because he was stabbed, but then found in another room. So I suppose we don't actually have enough... Murder. <coughs> oh. It kind of all feels like murder right now. Okay. So let's get out of here. Right, let's find out where this gets. So what it's now doing is it's taken us to their death sites. So it's him. Release the spirit. Oh. I'm not sure I follow this part. I think it's placing them in time. So what it's saying is, here he was in action against the Kraken. Here's where he ended up. So we're, we're like skipping time, I think. We're kind of jumping back and forward in this in 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 bits. I'm guessing that's the guy that tried to save our tattooed friend. Oh. So there's been an explosion. It's so clever, this frozen in time thing. Yeah, so the Kraken, there's been an explosion and he seems to be holding what looks, he's wrapped around it actually. It's wrapped around his waist and it goes up there folds over and comes down again through his hand and all the way up there. So there's been some... Oh, and there's a guy in it. Yeah, there's a body inside there. As well as the Kraken. Right, that's Tattoo Guy beforehand.
the doom. Who is this inside there and how did they die? So yeah, he's in there. Well, we knew we know how he died. Because he died of being exploded. <laughs> okay, all right. It's a bit gruesome, this. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. Um, but we don't... But again, so... I seem to be lacking the links between... I can tell how they died, which is the obvious, very visual part. What I'm not sure about is who they are, and I'm assuming that's going to help. That's going to light up for us more later. Right, so two guys there. There's him. Trying to get up the stairs with all the guns. There's him. With his fancy hat on. It says tab to open the book. Open the book while examining a face to flip directly to the sketch. Okay. So that's... Him. But we don't know who he is yet. And he's not dying in that scene. There's Tattoo Guy. There's... Tie yourself to a bucket of explosives. Guy. And then there's unfortunate guy. Okay, all right. So can we... Ah, we could find out who... So that's where he is on the ship. So if I go to there and go tab, it's him. He got... Yeah, it says that. He got exploded. Robert Whittard, he got... So it starts to fill them out as cards. This is nice. <clears throat> Get out of here, Pickard. I'm waiting on a hop joke. I'm using the powers of deduction, Barry. <laughs> Which I have to say I'm traditionally not very good at, so I'm not entirely sure what's going on. Right, so we know what happened to Tattoo Guy. We know what happened to him. He was... So let's see if we can recap. So this guy was shot by the captain. This guy was... Um, had his throat cut by the captain. This guy was bludgeoned by the captain. We think that's the captain, which we'll explore next. And that's the captain's wife. So right now, I want to explore this guy. Abigail. That's her. Your brother. My friend. I shot him. <gasps> Dead. So Abigail's brother is the first I'll mate. Be with you. Soon, my love. Please forgive me. For everything. Now, if she's got a double barreled name, we might be able to ascertain who that was. Oh, he shot himself. Ah, so he wasn't stabbed. Wow, that's nasty. Bum, 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 bum. Okay. Oh, the door's closed. Why is the door closed? Summarising, surmising, evaluating evidence, critical analysis, gathering information, or um, 
Right, okay, so we know inside the captain's quarters, no one else was present, of course. So we can go into there now and we can finish that and we can say suicide with a gun. Now, he says, Abigail, your brother, my friend, I shot him. Dead. I'll be with you soon, my love. Please forgive me for everything. How sad. Now, what I think we can do is I think we can go into the book now and we can look at the crew. And if she's got a double-barreled name, which I thought she did, Hoskett. Hoskett. So William Hoskett, the first mate, is, so he is the first mate. He was the captain's friend and he was her brother. Okay, not that I think that actually adds to anything, but it helps us to piece together some of the relationships that might that might come in later. Um, oh, there's a little thingy picture and they look for most in royalty. So we actually had some Formosan royalty on board. Was that always there or did I miss that picture? Okay. No one else was present. We know where it happened. Okay. <coughs> so, and we know he's the captain, so I'm happy with that. Now the door's open, all right. So let's go back out and see. Yeah, analysis for sure. Record keeping, did you, did you put that already? Yeah, recording, record keeping, for sure. Here's the thing, I, I don't know if you would necessarily use something like Return of the Oberdin in school. I mean, it's violent, although it's almost pirate, like Pirates of the Caribbean violence, but not really, I mean, I, I think that you probably wouldn't, but what you could do is create something similar. You could do a pirate-themed murder mystery involving a kraken. You could create something like this that allowed students in Minecraft, for example, where you had an abandoned ship in Minecraft, and then over time, you could lay out certain things, like scenes that you could either clone in or you would have them go through a set of scenes through teleports to get to parts of the story where certain things had happened. And what you're really asking the students to do is determine what was different about the, from this scene to the last scene. Keep your records, analyze, figure out what's going on, why is the front of the ship got a hole in it, that kind of stuff. So over time, and maybe we could do this as a community, we could create an Obradin style mystery I'm loath to say murder mystery but well everybody likes a murder mystery uh, in that in that way maybe we could recreate our own okay so that's gone straight to the end why I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with this oh there we are look oh so that was ah right so if I go back into this now Open the book while the pocket watch is open to flip directly to the relevant page. Okay. But I don't want to do that. What I want to do is go to the map, the journey, and I've noticed now that it puts an X on the map, depending on where they are. So where's that X? It's gone now. Oh, there, look. Ah, so it does, it, right, there we go. So that is where the end happened. That's where the doom happened. Any others yet? No, because they didn't get past the doom, I don't think. Wow, they hadn't even made it to Madeira and past the Azures when the, uh, when the doom struck. Okay. You have to assume that that was the first, second, and third mate, right? I, 
I wonder it. I'm going to see what it says about please explain. So it says, this person's face appears blurred. The blurring indicates that you don't have sufficient information. Hey, Tatooine teacher. Good to see you, my friend. Um, we think they were clubbed. Trying to name them while their fate is blurred would be unproductive. Okay, fair enough. Carry on and pay attention. Right, okay. I get it. All right. So let's just get back out and get into the action. So we know that the captain, this is the captain. Why is that not letting me zoom in? I think it's... Can we go back out here? And we know that we've now got Tattoo Guy. Mystery Guy. Anyone else? Can we go downstairs now? Oh, we can. Ooh, look at this. So we've got... We're not allowed in any doors at the moment, no. Oh, what's behind here? Nothing. That just leads us back out. Okay. Uh-oh. I mean, if you're going to go, that's probably not the way you want to do it. Is squished under a cannon. And I'm not allowed any... Oh, I am allowed further. Look. Oh, look. This window's been ripped out. Yeah, more cannons. Unless there's been a mutiny. But then... Yeah, possibly. They certainly were trying to get something off the captain. Oh, where does that go? Oh, no, it's okay. It's closed. For the moment... There's nothing in these rooms. Like, no one. Nothing worth exploring. Not allowed in that one. I am allowed in that one. These are bunks. And then up to the end there, nothing. Oh, oh. What's that? No, that's okay. All right. So let's go look at our crushed guy. Someone's going to get crushed by a cannon. Uh... I like that wee piece of music. back upstairs so who has been squished by a cannon let's find him ah right so he's right there at the front of the hanging morbid git oh I think I've got this wrong I'm going to tell you why or maybe not wrong, but I think I... Right, we know, we don't know who he is, but as always, we know how they died. He was crushed by a cannon. Now... What's happened here was in Scottish. Sir, loose cannon, and then someone, that was an English accent, and then someone in an other English accent said, she's healing over, find your footing. And I'd like to hear that again, because what's happened here was in a Scottish accent, which allows us, and I assume it was this guy, Oh, maybe, maybe this guy, actually. Nah, you know what? I probably can't... Oh, I am allowed through here. Oh, there's another guy. And another one. Oh, what's happened to him? Is he dead? Oh, yeah, there's only half of him. <laughs> there's only half. Half a guy there, and we don't know... Ah, so we could choose one of these to see where they go next. 
So let's choose half a guy, actually. Oh no, it's going to make us do... Where's it going? Oh, you're chasing me around. You're, what, you're running me around here. Ah, there he is. It is him. It's the guy on the ground. Okay. So let's figure out what he's done next. Oh, that was French. Oh, that was a... That was this cannon, which had been lit, got turned by the monster and crushed our boy down there and blew our guy up over there. <laughs> this is brutal. Meanwhile, these guys are not dead yet. That's the loose cannon there. Oh, there's Tattoo Guy. So he was downstairs doing that first. So we really are going back and forward in time. It's just given us enough time to really see all the bodies that we can find. So, of course, we're not going to finish this tonight and we're not going to play it every week until we do either. But I think we could keep coming back to this. If, I mean, there's 13 people in the stream right now. Let me know if this is something you want to come back to. Um, but I think over time, if we did this maybe once a month until we complete it, we could have a little Oberdin session um, collection going. So I don't know how any of those people died. We're going to have to find out. I don't know which one was which, so we're going to have to go back in and find out. Oh, it's doing that thing again. I'm a bit confused. Oh, it's him. Look, it wants to identify him. So what we're doing is we're identifying a dead person and then going back to place them. Pickard thinks we need to finish it. We maybe do this like the um, last stream of every month or something. So yeah, he's he's another one crushed by a cannon. But who is he? Right, let's find out. He's Irish. Right, that's the guy that ends up super crushed. So him. And then that's the guy that gets blasted to get to the wall because he's right on the end. And they're still at it. Look, tattoo guy's still at it. So this is just a few minutes earlier. All right, all right, all right, all right. I think I missed something. Right. Yes, <clears throat> so that guy was crushed by a cannon, and we don't know who he is. The guy who said load, move by hands, aim level, ready, no belay, spark was Irish. And I'm assuming it was him that said it. 
So let's look at the... Ah, uh, I was meant to go and look at the book. Actually, I can do that now. So let's go and look at the... Crew. How many Irish, Irish do we have? Uh, there's one. Oops. Uh, hang on. Let's go further down. Right, we've got Emil O'Farrell, the butcher. And we've got Samuel Galligan. And we've also got the other one that was further down, O'Hagan. There we go, Patrick O'Hagan. So I couldn't guess. It's not like we have one Irishman. Um... Okay. But we do know if I just see it's it, it can't identify who they are, so it's not saying. So so far we have only got three. All right, let's keep going. Hi, Knitting Turtle. This game is called The Return of the Obra Dinn. Uh, thanks so much, Pickard. It's, um, it's like a murder mystery done in an old graphic style on, uh, in the 18, 1800s. And it's actually very, very, very good, but also very difficult. Um, okay, so now we just pick another one. I actually want to pick him. No, it's not going to let me. What do we do now? Oh, there it is. Okay. Right, so that's our wee crushed guy there. I still want to find out what happened to part four of eight. Right, we heard this one already. That's that one. And that's our guy. Interesting, where's the second guy that was there? Because remember, there was a guy, there was two people t attached to the front of that cannon. Ah, that's the guy with the top hat. So we know that he was blasted by a cannon, so let's go find him in the book. There we go, him. He was... Shot by a cannon. Now it says by an unknown enemy. I think it was the beast. Wasn't it the beast that got a hold? I think it was the... Yeah, tell me, Barry, why could we surmise that he was not a cook or non-staff? I'll take anything at this point. <laughs> and we don't know who he was, though, so we'll come back to that. I'm just a bit confused about how he was shot, because we know nobody else shot him. I don't want to put unknown because it leaves it incomplete. I'm going to say it was the beast, because the beast took the cannon, turned it, crushed it and turned it in the chaos possibly, but there are structures even then, yeah. Yeah. You mean, um, now the guy that says the fuse sounds like he's, Fre uh, not French, maybe Italian or something. So, oops. I, he actually sounded French to be fair. So let's go see what's, who we've got. 
So we've got Scotland, England, Austria. Alfred Clestel. He's because he says Zephuse. Now there's two. There's a Christian wolf as well. He says Zephuse. So possibly French or German. I'm leaning towards German. Sierra Leone. They speak French, don't they, in Sierra Leone? Was that not an ex-French? It uh, would have been a French colony at that time. Um, where's Formosa? There is an Italian, but I don't think he sounded Italian. So, oh, Gunner. Wait, 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 wait. So, Aulus Waiter. No, no, sorry. Austria. Christian Wolf was a Gunner. You got me thinking, Barry, because I haven't looked at their positions yet, other than first mate, captain, etc. And then the other Austrian, where was the second Austrian? Was a bosun. What's a bosun? Oh, I'm going to look that up. It's 22-22 here, everybody. Lucky for some. Um, I don't know what a bosun or a bosun is. A bosun on a ship crew is a bosun or a boatswain or a bosun, also known as a deck boss or a qualified member of the deck department, is the most senior rate of the deck department and is a responsible and is responsible for the components of a ship's hull. Who knew? I like learning new stuff. So there we go. So we've got bosun, who was the Austrian. Then the boss's mate who was from France, and I did say, I thought he said it in French. I wonder if we can listen back to it. Can we listen back to that? I don't know if we can. It's kind of hard to hear. I wish we could, I wish there was a little sound file that we could hear. Let's go and listen again. I'll head through here. Right. Let's listen to his story one more time. Right. Definitely says the fuse. The fuse. Okay. So let's head back. Um, let's find out if we can see what they, if they would have worn anything notable bots when scouting, job description. Directly translated from Norwegian, it would have been Botsvin. Shakespeare wrote about them in The Tempest as bossons. It doesn't say anything about what they would have worn, like a top hat or... Well, there we go. Interesting stuff. All right, so we know who crushed, well, we know how crushed guy died. We know how he now died. Let's go find someone else. We've done him. Am I missing something? Oh, 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 there's a guy. I like that the game gently leads you, like, oh. <laughs> So he literally just had the kick squeezed out of him. 
<laughs> he was doing the toilet and then got crushed. Oh, so he's the author. He's the ES. So who's this unknown soul? So this guy, who is this and how did they die? He is, he was crushed by a beast and I try anyways. I think, let's look for e Edward Nichols, no, ES. So let's look for an Edward Spratt was the artist. I think he was Edward Spratt. <laughs> he, was, he was having the toilet <laughs> anyway, and then it came along and just gave him a hand. Wait a minute, am I on the wrong page? No, I don't think that is Edward Spratt. Sorry, forget that. Await further clues was unknown. Try anyways, unknown. Okay. I think I'm at the wrong bit. He's not the bald guy. He's got a waist jacket on. I thought when you did that, ah, there we are, right. I, I think, there we go, he is the artist formerly known as. <laughs> um, i got to listen to his soundbite again. Right, Edward Spratt. But what did he look like? He had a waistcoat on. Oh, but then he wouldn't be in there, would he? Because he is the artist. Oh, it's not like selfies, Stephen. <laughs> and then the other guys that were, so he was present. He gets around, by the way. And then he was shot with a cannon. He was the, well, he may have been the bosun. Wow. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Oh. He was, he was eating. He was getting potatoes. Imagine that. You're going for your dinner and that's what you hear. <laughs> There's a sense of humour in this game, I have to say. Oh, look, they're in their beds, look. So there's somebody in his bed. Somebody in that bed, yep, they've got their wee feet. Okay, all right. And there's some more over there that I missed. Okay, let's figure this out. On the bow. Except Edward Spratt didn't meet an unknown fate, did he? We know that he was crushed by a beast. Oh! Well done! Three fates are correct. Yay! That is a good place to stop. So we know that Captain Robert Witterell shot himself. We know that Edward Spratt was crushed by a terrible beastie. And Abigail Hoskett Witterell, a passenger, was crushed by falling rigging. Oh look, we're getting little we're getting three little things there. I'm so happy with that. <laughs> okay, we are gonna finish there because it is uh, what time is it for me? Bang on ten thirty. Um so uh thank you so much. Let me just um we'll just head back to here. Uh, that was fantastic. I really enjoyed that. I feel so accomplished because, <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> anyone, any uh, teacher in my primary or high school would tell you that that was not my skill set. Um, but I'm really, really happy with, um, with what we just achieved. I'm glad you like it. I think what we'll do is uh, next week I'm going to show you Zoo Tycoon and we're going to be building a small zoo and looking at the really deep uh, knowledge that these these games can provide on things like significantly around animal habitat and animal endangerment and conservation. And so we're going to build a zoo, uh, which might also turn into a series. But um, every so often, I think what we'll do is we'll we'll come back to the Oberdin 
and then when the we finish the Oberdin, we'll move on to another. And I think that will be a nice way to um, to pull the stream together, right? Um, and we can complete some games together. Um, Unicorn has just popped something into the chat. Let me have a look. Yes, right. So he's got a top hat on. The clothing of a boatswain, right. He's Austrian. He's one of the Austrians. And he's the bosun. So I think I know, when we go back in, I think I know which one, if we even remember in four weeks' time, but I think I know which one is the bosun who is Austrian. And it's the one that got shot. Remind me of that next time. The Austrian bosun was shot by the cannon. That's where we'll start next uh, next time. Okay, so listen, thank you so much, everyone, for just hanging out and playing uh, because as is the title of the uh, as is the title of the stream, Play Matters. Um, I also said, one of the things I'll say before I say a final goodbye is I also said I wanted to get some guests on to have a chat about some stuff. Barry, you are a natural choice uh, with regards to the at worlds that you're building but actually based on that video that went out about Wales maybe we could arrange to have um, uh, you know two three or four of you involved to come on and we can do like a split screen I'll set up a split screen thing or we'll do it in teams or something and we'll um, and we'll and we'll have you all on to talk about where Wales is at with game-based learning and turn it into a uh, a lovely um a lovely session but also if there's any other guests that you want to have on uh we're going to have our, our our also um our community member um our 3d our 3d art guy uh on as well uh, paul kerkel so but if there's any other guests that you want to have on uh Give them a shout. Give me a shout, of course, and I can make all the relevant um, r outreach. But if but if you have someone and you say, hey, listen, there's this live stream, it would be I'd love to see you on it. Stephen takes guests. Would you be interested? Throw them at me, like DM me or reach out to me on our um, on our Discord. Uh, the um, you, you'll see the the Discord is now in the chat. If you're watching this right now, because there are 12 people in, if you're watching this right now and you're not already a member of the Discord, jump on. If you are uh, watching this and you're also not already a member of either our Twitch or our YouTube, which is also just youtube.com forward slash play matters, get over there and give us a subscribe. These videos go up. We're now on our fourth. Um, this video will be up in the next. In fact, it has to be up tomorrow because I'm leaving for Atlanta on Tuesday. Um, I am leaving for Atlanta on Tuesday. I suspect, I expect to be back by next Sunday, um, pending no delays. So keep your fingers crossed for me. And I will see you all next week. Thank you so much. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye-bye.